Bonjour, I'm Antoine. Today on l'interview, Eric Model, president of Model Diamonds. Let's go meet him. Eric! Hey, Anton, hey. nice to see you. How are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. How nice. are you doing? You're I'm good? I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Good. So, uh, let's dive in. Let's, let's. start by the, telling us you know, who you are, uh, where you're from, how long you've been in New York City. Uh, so, I'm Eric Modell. I've lived in New York City my whole life. Okay. Uh, I'm the fourth generation in a family business. We are in the diamond business, the pawnbroking yeah. business, and the real estate business. <laughs> Okay, a lot of businesses. We like to keep busy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, let's dive in. So, I have a question. I think the audience also has a question. What makes um, a diamond uh, expensive and less expensive? Can you tell us, like in two minutes, what makes the difference? Sure. Uh, diamonds are valued based on many factors. Many okay. people are familiar with the four C's. Four uh, C's? What is it? Four C's are color. Carrot, which is size. Okay. Clarity means imperfection. And the cut, the shape of the diamond. Okay. Um, if a diamond has better color. Yeah, yeah. And is big and has very few imperfections, it's going to be very expensive. Okay. If a diamond has a lot of imperfections and you can see uh, problems in the stone. Uh huh with your naked eye, it's going to be less expensive. Okay. And when they talk about cut, it can be cut well, it can be cut poorly. So sometimes a diamond is too big, in meaning that it looks small from the top, but it's very tall. Sometimes uh, it's very flat. Okay, got it. And in those cases, it doesn't generate the brilliance that people want. And brilliance is sparkle, uh, okay. because that's what it's all about. Everybody wants the diamond with the biggest sparkle. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you're really an expert, but have you, uh, have you always wanted to be a diamond dealer your whole life? Or is that because you know, you're, you're, you're the fourth generation? You said, okay, I take over? Uh, no, actually, uh, it was a very long time before I even understood what my family business was all about. <laughs> well, I you have so many businesses. Well, <laughs> and, we, and we keep developing them over the years. Yeah. Um, when I went to college, I had no intention of coming into the business. Uh -huh. uh, when I graduated, I was not invited into the business. I went and took a job with Corporate America. Yeah. Uh, I traveled the world and I was looking for something different to do. So one day I called up my dad. I said, Dad, I need to make a change in my life. And, and he said, we got a seat for you. He said, Let, he said, let's have lunch and talk about it. Oh, that's so and cool. I was looking for advice and uh -huh. he, he turned the tables on me and it turned into a recruiting lunch. <laughs> And next thing I knew, <laughs> I had a new job. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, uh, this segues perfectly on my uh, next question. So, uh, what qualities does, um, uh, do you need to be a diamond dealer? What uh, is the, the most important qualities you need? Uh, well, you have to be honest. Okay, that, uh, that's important, kind of. Well, uh, what do you think, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody you're going to work with in this business, they're going to give you a, a lot of valuables, a lot of money, uh -huh. and they need to know that you're going to bring it back. This business, for hundreds of years, worked on a handshake. Okay. Uh, you can used to see people, much more so than today, uh -huh. transacting business all day long right here on the street. No offices, no security, no paper, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. Just a handshake and a deal and mazal, and we move yeah, on. Yeah, mazal, yeah. Mazal, you know mazal? <laughs> yes. But once, so, you, once you say mazal and you shake a man's hand, that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, okay. But you have to be motivated. You have to be a hustler. Yes. Um, everybody wants something different. And we always say in our, in our office, everybody wants what you don't have. <laughs> Sounds like real estate to yeah. me too. <laughs> Actually, yes. It's exactly like real estate. So tell me, uh, well, as you can see, you know, we're in, right now in the heart of the uh, Diamond District. Shops are next to one another. Okay, competition. I mean, you can get better in terms of competition, correct? Do you would you consider that the best uh, salesmanship uh, school? Um, 
Yeah, the competition on the street is intense. I mean, you look around, every window yeah. has, you know, <laughs> something, to offer. something to offer and something for everybody, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can you can play these guys off of each other very easily yeah. uh, because everybody's right here. It doesn't take f much to find somebody else with a similar product. Uh -huh. uh, but it keeps people honest, yeah. for the most part. <laughs> So, uh, Eric, um, how would you describe New Yorkers uh, when it comes down to, uh, to Diamond? So, I think New Yorkers really want to have nice jewelry. Okay. New York City is a place where people like to show what they have, uh -huh. uh, and this is the place where they get their jewelry. Um, uh -huh. New Yorkers, though, they usually know somebody on the street, so the yes. retail operations are not really where the New Yorkers go. This is a little bit more <laughs> for the tourists. The yeah, 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 I got you. <laughs> so a lot of these, everybody, you know, most New Yorkers, they, uh, well, I should say we, but we yeah. all know a guy with an office upstairs. <laughs> and that's where you really want to do your business. That's where you want to do your business. Okay, that's a great advice. Okay. Um, so talking about advice, what, what kind of advice would you give to a brand new, uh, somebody who wants to come into this business? You know, wants to, wants to open a, uh, 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 dealership. Uh, I wouldn't say a, a, a dealership uh, of diamond or uh, you know, a, a, a well, store. Well, for someone to open a store in this business takes first. It takes a lot of capital. Yes. Uh, okay. Because uh, people aren't going to give you goods on memo, meaning <laughs> just hand it to you <laughs> and let you keep it. What about the good look? No? Not going to help. <laughs> nope. That only works at the trade shows. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a tough business to break into. Usually when people want to start, they have to work, in, work themselves into a business and then branch out on their own. Uh -huh. okay. Raising the capital, okay. trying to develop a name for themselves, uh -huh. um, and a reputation uh -huh. that will get them the opportunity to take goods on memo. Okay, so in other words, uh, you want to open a, uh, a diamond business, first learn the business with somebody, and you know, be a sponge and then expand. Yeah. Say it's kind of like in the real estate business. You'd be a salesman <laughs> first and then you become a broker. So Eric, um, how do you feel, by the way, about the, you know, the lab grown uh, diamond that you, you know, just uh, brought up? I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the lab grown diamonds. No? Uh, first, Why I, is that? I think that, uh, first I appreciate a diamond for what it is. It comes from the earth. It's something that, okay. that the earth gave us. Uh -huh. uh, and We've been, we've been using diamonds from the earth for thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, Lab-grown diamonds, man found a way to duplicate you know, what Mother Nature already had perfected. Yes. Uh, but the, the price of the uh, lab-grown diamonds is significantly lower yeah. than, um, than the natural diamonds. Uh -huh. And that speaks to some people, but a diamond yeah. is supposed to be a natural product. So okay. to me, it's all about natural it's natural about, stones. Okay, it's about natural stones. Okay, I get it. But in terms of uh, the quality of the diamond, do you see a, a difference between the two? Unfortunately, it's not it, so easy to tell. It's getting, it's getting closer and the, closer. Well, there's also technology now that helps you identify one from the other. Oh, wow. So I can actually, I have a machine in my office. I can put it, put a yeah, diamond yeah, yeah. in the machine and it'll tell me if it's lab grown or not. That's but unfortunately, with the naked eye or even yeah. tip, traditional jeweler's tools, uh -huh. uh, that's imp it's it's impossible. It's, it's it? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm sorry to say it. No, no, no. Hey, look, that's you know, the reality. We we want to hear. You know, it's your yeah. reputation, like yeah. you said. Yeah. You know. Uh, so tell me, talking about uh, you know your work, how do you handle um, clients who don't have uh, who their expectations don't meet yeah. the prices they they're looking for? So what do you do? Well, we educate them. Okay. Um, we finish the education, I should say. Most people don't <laughs> finish the education. Most people don't come into the diamond, the purchase of a diamond, yeah. with any ex any knowledge. So uh -huh. they go on the internet and they learn yeah. a lot, and they learn about the characteristics of diamonds, but they don't learn so much about value. Yeah. Um, and so they come to me and they say, I want a very specific kind of a diamond and I'm going to pay this amount of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, sorry, but there's a little <laughs> bit of a disconnect there. And if I could sell you that, I would. But unfortunately, that's not really how it works. All right. So, uh, Eric, what is your greatest strength? 
Uh, I think our reputation. Your reputation, we've okay. Been, we've been in this business for 129 years. 129? 129 years. <laughs> There's right? a lot of history. It's behind a you. lot of history. Yeah. <laughs> it, it happens to actually be a great New York story. Yes. Uh, that goes back to the to 1890. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and it started with a push cart. Started with a push cart? Started with a push cart. Do you, um, do you have a picture on your phone? Uh, or? I don't have a picture on my phone, but I'd love to show you in the office where I do have some of the history on display. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go. Let's right. go. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, what we walk, tell me, um, what's your favorite precious stone after diamond? I like emeralds. Emeralds? I like emeralds. Okay. Uh, something, I, I like green. That's my color. And <laughs> it's also... The color of money? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Um, but they're also very brittle, so they're hard to work with. So yeah. they're a little more delicate than, uh -huh. than all the others. So uh, Okay. All right. So you really need to be yeah. an expert at uh, yeah. cutting it. Yes. Well, anytime you put a, a, any sort of se uh, precious stone on a wheel, how they cut diamonds, yeah. uh, it's very risky. And you always run the chance that it's going to fall apart or going to cleave in half. Uh -huh. And that's the last thing you want. Yeah, that's the last thing you want. Yeah. So, okay, let's dish a little bit. Do you have like a, a funny story to tell us? Uh, so, no names, okay? Of course. Well, <laughs> I, to be honest, most of my good stories don't come from the sale of diamonds as they no? do from uh, from my from our uh, business. lending business. Your lending business. Got you. Um, but I mentioned emeralds. There yeah. was a time uh, we took in what was considered to be the world's largest polished emerald. Oh wow! Uh, I have it in the office actually as well, yeah, and I can show you that as well. In picture? No, in real, the real deal. Oh my God! <laughs> I don't uh, know if we can handle that. I don't know if I can <laughs> handle showing it either, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay. Okay. So I don't really have a funny story so much as what I consider my favorite story, but uh, it's my. During my dad's tenure, somebody came to us uh -huh. uh, as a loan customer with what okay. is this magnificent emerald, and it is the world's largest polished, hand-carved emerald. It's oh my god! <laughs> it's about a thousand carats. A thousand carats. It's this big. Oh my god! And I've arranged to show it to you in the other room. Really? Yes. That's so nice of you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Exclusive. <laughs> yes, and exclusive. Not too many people get to see. By it. the way, yeah, yeah, we got the, we got the family right there, correct? Yes. Uh, so some of the these are some pictures from uh, the early 1900s. Uh huh. Um, in every one of them is a family member. Uh huh. Um, and it's funny. The same guy is in two of these pictures, and in one of them he's a very young man, and the other one he's a much older man. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, are you going to show it to us? Yeah, uh, come on, uh, let's yeah, go yeah. in. You said it, you said yeah. it, huh? <laughs> okay, so first of all, uh, for the camera, for the record, uh, it's an exclusive. <laughs> we didn't expect that in the interview, and that's what the interview is all about. We have a discussion, and here comes great story. So tell us a little bit about this so this baby. Is, I can't wait. <laughs> this is a very unique piece. Okay. Uh, it came to us in the 1970s. Okay. Uh, and it was a customer walked in, wanted to make a loan on it. And uh, he presented us with this particular piece, which is the world's well, largest. This is, this is crazy. Emerald. It is approximately 1,000 carats. It's, this is what 1,000 carat looks like? Yes. <laughs> It is hand carved and estimated to be from the 15th century. Wow, this is amazing. How'd you get that? A guy walked in to make a loan yeah. and we looked at it and we really had no idea what to give on this. And he asked for a number. We thought about it. We asked some experts <laughs> and we said, okay, we made a loan. Mazal. Mazal. And then the next day, our hearts sank when the FBI walked in. The FBI came in. Great. Not, Love never it, huh? a good sign. <laughs> and they were asking about the gentleman who made the loan on this. Oh. And then they seized it because they knew what was going on. Yeah. Did you? No. They, they didn't tell you. They, they didn't tell us what was going on, this is but they now. knew that we had it before they asked us if we had it. So they seized it from us 
And a few months later, they gave it back to us, which is not usual in, when you're dealing with the FBI. Uh, but they gave it back to us, and we've been holding it ever since. That's the guy obviously never came back. He never paid interest on it. I don't know what happened with the FBI. Well, it's probably more than your loan anyway it's worth, no? I, I, to me, <laughs> I don't know where to begin to put a value on this. It's truly a unique piece, uh, the largest of its kind. Yeah. And, and it's, I don't know how well the camera can see it, but there is intricate de detail carved into the, into the stone. This is just... Uh, beauty. I feel, I feel like I'm in the museum right now. That's about the only place I can think to put it. <laughs> yeah, I do believe so, yeah. I think the Smithsonian might be interested, but we'll see. <laughs> I also don't want to let it go because I have such a unique piece and I can sit yeah. here and show it to you and talk about it and I, I always have a good story with it. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fantastic story. Uh, tell me, um, I have a, uh, my last question. Oh boy. <laughs> If you were a tool or an object to help you, to help uh, uh, your, your store, your business, to go to a higher height, what would you be? If I were a tool to go, to bring the business to a better level, hmm, I wish I, I, wish I was such a tool to make such a thing happen. Um, I, I think the best tool that uh, the jewelry industry has today is in fact social media. Uh, I think it's unfortunate. So you so be a social media platform? I would be an, I would be a, an influencer. I would be. Oh, okay. I would be a guy who. That's not really a tool, though. Oh, I need I, a tool. It's not a tangible tool, <laughs> but influencers today have changed every yeah. industry, and you see what goes on on 47th Street. Uh, somebody promotes their product on social media, and their store becomes. Yeah. Tremendously successful and hugely famous. Okay. So, social media it is. Unfortunately. Eric, Eric Influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. That's it, folks. That was Eric Model, president of Moral Diamonds. So, uh, please, if you're looking for a diamond, priceless stones, please uh, contact him. He's going to do wonders. Uh, you know the drill. Uh, subscribe, share, like, comment. We need you all. But in the meantime, it's selfie time. Selfie time. Where are my glasses? Right here. Oh, you look good. Yeah, you look good too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Uh, uh, uh. You look like let's... brothers. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah! <laughs> okay, I usually do like 15. <laughs> 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 Gotta find the right one. Perfect. That is no, the this money one's shot. better. Look at this one. That's a money shot right there. This one will look great. Should put that on my uh, dating site.